Lord, hear my voice, for I have called to you. Be my help. Do not abandon or forsake me, O God, my Saviour. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You are very welcome to Mass today on the 11th Sunday of Ordinary Time. As we prepare to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love, let us acknowledge our failures and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord says this, From the top of the cedar, from the highest branch, I will take a shoot and plant it myself on a very high mountain. I will plant it on the high mountain of Israel, it will sprout branches and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Every kind of bird will live beneath it. Every winged creature rests in the shade of its branches. And every tree of the field will learn that I, the Lord, am the one who stunts tall trees and makes the low ones grow, who withers green trees and makes the withered green. I, the Lord, have spoken and I will do it. The Word of the Lord. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to make music to your name, O Most High, to proclaim your love in the morning and your truth in the watches of the night. The just will flourish like the palm tree and grow like a Lebanon cedar. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God, still bearing fruit when they are old, still full of sap, still green, to proclaim that the Lord is just. In him, my rock, there is no wrong. 
a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. We are always full of confidence when we remember that to live in the body means to be exiled from the Lord, going as we do by faith and not by sight. We are full of confidence, I say, and we actually want to be exiled from the body and make our home with the Lord. Whether we are living in the body or exiled from it, we are intent on pleasing him. For all the truth about us will be brought out in the law court of Christ, and each of us will get what he deserves for the things he did in the body, good or bad. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. I call you friends, says the Lord, because I have made known to you everything I have learned from my Father. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to the crowds, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man throws seed on the land. Night and day, while he sleeps, when he is awake, the seed is sprouting and growing. How, he does not know. Of its own accord, the land produces first the shoot, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the crop is ready, he loses no time. He starts to reap because the harvest has come. He also said, What can we say the kingdom of God is like? What parable can we find for it? It is like a mustard seed, which at the time of its sowing in the soil is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet once it is sown, it grows into the biggest shrub of them all and puts out big branches so that the birds of the air can shelter in its shade. Using many parables like these, he spoke the word to them so far as they were capable of understanding it. He would not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything to his disciples when they were alone. The Gospel of the Lord. Shortly after a new church had been built, a man stood outside admiring it. Standing right beside him was a little girl of about seven or eight. Mr queried the child. Do you like that church? Yes, my dear, I think it is quite lovely, said the man. Well, mister, I'm glad you like it, because I helped to build it. You helped to build it, was the astonished reply. The child nodded. But, said he, you're only a little girl. How did you help to build it? My father is a bricklayer, came the prompt reply, and when he worked on the church, I used to bring him his tea and sandwiches every day. Now, the same applies, I think, to building the kingdom of God on earth. Every little thought, word, or gesture of love, howsoever insignificant, goes to build up God's kingdom in our midst. And opportunities like this are there for everyone. Jesus says, Take the mustard seed. At the time of its sowing, it's the smallest of all the seeds on earth. But once sown, it grows into the biggest shrub there is. Sowing little seeds then, and little is the operative word here, sowing little seeds of love along the pathway of life is what makes us, us great. It's not the grand gestures done for show which makes the difference. However, this doesn't mean that we sow these seeds rather sparingly. Thin sowing means thin reaping. One day, someone commented to Mother Trees of Calcutta when they said, There are so many poor people in Calcutta that your work with the homeless and the dying is like a drop in the ocean. Mother Teresa looked the person straight in the eye and said, 
God does not call us to great things, but faithfulness in little things. I believe that relationships can become strained when small acts of affection are routinely overlooked. A thank you card, an uplifting smile, hours out of the blue, a pat on the back, a short prayer with your little ones at bedtime, and much more. Our small acts of love may not be immediately reciprocated or even acknowledged. It does not patter, matter if people take little or no notice when you sow these tiny mustard seeds of love. St. Teresa once said, If we go through life without anyone noticing our good deeds, so much the better. The seed grows secretly even while we're asleep, as it says in the reading. But God is not asleep. He sees into our hearts and he knows all the little mustard seeds of love that we have sown in the garden of our lives. St. Teresa again said that small hidden sacrifices done on behalf of others are what pleases our Lord. It's often the unacknowledged acts of kindness, the hidden crosses offered to Jesus, the caustic remark held back. All these are little mustard seeds of grace which help us to grow into the persons that God wants us to be. Some people underestimate themselves and think that in the great scheme of things, their contribution won't count for much. The Gospel today states the opposite, however. Everyone has a part to play, howsoever minor, in contributing towards the building up of God's kingdom on earth in preparation for our entry into the eternal kingdom of heaven. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who in the offerings presented here, provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament. Grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or spirit, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and he gave it to the disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Holy Father, keep in your name those you have given me, that they may be one as we are one, says the Lord.
Let us pray. As we, this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your Church, through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.